good afternoon. You know, certainly thankful once again to be able to come to you with our live stream. You know, uh, you know, we were in the office today, and the Lord just began to, you know, kind of burden my heart. You know, really all day to get on here and uh, step out here on lunch break and, uh, you know, just get, go ahead and deliver you our weekly stream. You know, and uh, you know, yesterday, you know, the Lord just began to preach us out of the Scripture. You know, and uh, you know, it doesn't seem like this happens often, but you know, the Lord just began to preach us out of the Scripture over there and. Uh, yesterday morning out of second kings in the fourth chapter you know and i know that uh you've probably heard you know message after message you know with that scripture over there you know you've probably heard it numerous probably numerous messages out of there you know but i'm thankful again you know that's a living word you know no matter no matter how many times you go through and you read the scriptures and you you know you look through them you know god can show you something that just you know again application for the right time and the right season you know thankful for that but uh you know again you know i I don't do these weekly streams to be famous. I don't do these weekly streams to make a name. You know, I don't care about those things. You know, I just, you know, in any any opportunity to use the tools available to you, you know, to, to for, you know, the uplift and uh, for uh, the cause of Christ, you know, you can never go wrong with that. You know, I'm thankful for that, you know. But uh, over here in Second Kings in the, in the fourth chapter, you know, just going to go ahead and read to you, you know, and uh, give you this. And it says, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handman hath not anything in the house. Thy handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. You know, and... Uh, I just began to think on that, you know, and this, you know, just kind of came out a little bit yesterday, you know, as the Lord was preaching us and, you know, it just, Lord just kind of, again, you know, he burned my heart today, you know, and he said, look, you know, I want you to take that and I want you to do it on your live stream. So here we are, you know, but, you know, you ever notice right here in verse two, you know, I've been stuck on this a little bit, you know, and, you know, the prophet, first off, you know, here's a woman right here, you know, she was, you know, it says right here that, you know, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets, Elijah, saying, thy servant, my husband is dead, so she's a widow woman, you know, but then she says, you know, also too, you know, basically saying, you know, you know that, you know, I fear the Lord, and but the problem here that I'm facing right now is, you know, she, the creditor, when you have creditors, you know, what that means is you owe something, you know, is what it means, you know, but we know the scripture too, that how, you know, again, you know, when you owe something, you know, if for obviously when it comes to Jesus Christ, you know, we owed a debt that, you know, that you and I couldn't pay and then Christ paid that debt for us. You know, thank God for that. You know, that sin debt, you know, he was that payment. He was that perfect sacrifice. But I guess the thought that I have in my heart this morning, you know, this afternoon, you know, is, you know, she, she, she was in fear, you know, of her sons, you know, being, you know, bondmen, you know, taken into slavery. But right here in verse two, you know, notice how she said, you know, I have absolutely nothing in my house, you know, save a pot of oil, you know, and that's just kind of what I'm stuck on. You know, she basically said, I, and I'm going to repeat it for you, is she said that I have nothing in my house, save a pot of oil, meaning, you know, all I have was just that pot of oil, you know, so we know in the scriptures, when you go and you expound on that and you study on that, you know, and uh, you know that, you know, typically, you know, when you study on that with the kings, what would they do? You know, they would take the horn of oil and they would anoint the king's head with the oil, representing on how they were anointed with the with the spirit of God, you know, the oil, a lot of times when you read about the oil in, in the, in the word, you know, a lot of majority of the time it talks, it's meaning the spirit, what it's significant for what it symbolizes is the spirit of the Lord, you know, and, uh, Zechariah actually, you know, you have, uh, the vision of the, you know, the candle, basically the candle brum, you know, with the seven pipes, but there's only one bowl of oil, you know, and the seven pipes, what they are is they were not only do they represent a completion, but just like in book of revelation, it talks about, you know, the seven different churches. It's all the same church. You know, it's all one church. It's just seven, seven different body church bodies is what it is, but it's still the same oil that flows through all seven pipes through all seven churches. It's the same oil that flows through every single one of them. So I guess the point that I'm trying to say here is, you know, it's the same spirit. You know, same God that they served back on the day of Pentecost that we serve today. Same spirit. So, you know, and, and I guess here again, here, I'll just give you the thought. You know, I'm thankful that, you know, when Satan can, tries to go and get you, you know, and cloud your mind and cloud your thoughts and cloud your vision and all that. I'm thankful that I can look and look, you know, look to the right, look to the left and just look directly into my heart and say, you know, if I don't have anything at all, I still got that. Just save that pot of oil. I have that pot of oil. You know, I have the spirit of God, you know, and, 
your friends, you know, if you could have friends in the world that could turn against you. You could have, you know, family that could turn against you, you know, and, you know, your jobs, you know, let me throw this out here too. Your job could come and go today or it could come and go tomorrow. But I'm thankful that, you know, those things, the temporal things, you could be absolutely down to your bare bones minimum. But when you got the spirit of God, you have everything. You have absolutely everything. See, and you might be saying, well, what are you trying to declare to us? You know, preacher, what I'm trying to declare to you is that right here, you know, again, this handmaid, she said to Elijah, I only have the pot of oil in my house. I have nothing else. Well, you, I'm looking at that and I'm like, well, wait a minute though. You just said that you were worried that your two sons were going to be bondmen. So yeah, you have more than, you know, what you're really saying, you know, and so are your sons meaningless? You know, again, that's carnal, you know, to look at that, you know, and I don't believe that's what, you know, exactly she was saying. She was worried to them be going into slavery, but you know, again, you know, I, I mean, aren't we like Onesimus, you know, and just, I just, I just got him on my heart again too, you know, Onesimus. You know, he, he was one that was, you know, fleeing, you know, he was basically, you know, a slave at that particular time, you know, to Philemon when you read over there in that scripture and, you know, well, anyway, you know, over there, what happened, you know, along the way he ran into Paul, but then when he, Paul, what did Paul write to Philemon about to basically take Onesimus in as one of him, you know, basically just like you would him, you know, as a brother, receive him now as a brother, you know, that's the best part about it is, you know, when you're saved by the grace of God, you're not a slave to sin no more, you know, but again, you got that pot of oil friend let me tell you if you have absolutely nothing else in this life just remember if you got that pot of oil you've got everything you have everything that you need right there you know and think about it this widow woman in the scripture you know let me throw this out here you know she was able to basically you know he she he basically said you know borrow as many vessels that you possibly can you know bar bar not a few is what he told him you know and just in just to keep pouring the oil out in him and the bible says that the oil stayed you know i'm thankful that you know again you know it, it doesn't say the oil ran out it says that the oil stayed you know again you know as long as the gospel's going out as long as god is dealing with hearts you know as long as you know that uh, window of opportunity that door still wide open as long as the church is here still proclaiming the gospel you know let me tell you you know if you got that oil you've got everything you know you do you know and think about it she was able to pay her debt she was able to pay all of her debt to where you know the and first of all let me throw this out here too she knew exactly who to go to can i say that you know, she knew who to go to. She immediately knew to turn to the man of God, you know, and you go a little bit further on in the scripture. You know, you have the Shunammite woman. What happened with the Shunammite woman? Well, she was given, you know, a son, and then all of a sudden his head started to hurt, and what happened? He fell dead, and then what happened? She knew to go directly to the man of God is what she was able to do. You know, that's the best part about serving God is that, you know, when we're weak, you know, and we feel like we have nobody to turn to, you know, and you might be thinking, or you think, you might be saying, well, Tim, are you saying that you have nothing? No, I'm, you know, I'm saying that the only reason I have what I have is because, you know, because of God. I can't take credit for any of those things. I can't. But I'll tell you that, again, Satan tries to cloud your vision. He tries to make you believe that, you know, you that that you know you're basically empty he makes you try to believe that you know that things aren't there you know where things are absent but the truth about it is again she had the say she had the pot of oil you know and if you got the pot of oil you've got everything but she was able to pay her debt you know and i like how it says right here in verse seven i'll read it to you and it says then she came and told the man of god and, and he said go sell the oil and pay off thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest and, you know, right there, you know, how was she able to live? She was able to live. First off, what does the spirit do? Does not the spirit bring life? Absolutely. That's what the spirit does. It brings life. But again, if you got, you know, and if the spirit is able to give you life, that's kind of why it talks about even in Ephesians, one of my favorite books in the scriptures, you know, it's a big scripture about unity. But one thing also too, is there, there's the word quicken in it. Quicken means to make alive. You know, again, that's what the Spirit does. He specializes in that. I mean, he did that on the third reporting morning. If he specializes in that, and again, if you got that pot of oil, you know, don't let Satan tell you that you don't have anything because just remember, if you got the Savior of the whole world, you have everything. You have all that you need. Everything else is basically, I guess you could say, a... Uh, you know, supplemental, you know, to whatever God gives you. It's supplemental to, to everything. And really, when you have everything, you really, I mean, let me say this. If something is supplemental, it means that you're adding to it. So let me throw this out here, too. You know, when you already have everything and God adds to that, you know, your cup overflows. You know, and it tends to spill out everywhere on everybody else. You know, that's the best part about serving God. But 
it, small thought for you this morning, you know, this afternoon. Just thankful to be able to get on here and appreciate all y'all tuning in. You know, good to see Brother Brandon on here. You know, love your brother. I, I've always admired your zeal for the Lord. You know, keep on doing that, brother. You know, and I'll tell you, that stuff will spill out on people. And, you know, I know what happens is they'll be you looking at you and be like, you know, you're always, you know, charismatic. You're always humble. You're always, you know, happy. How do you always happy? Even in the bad times, can I say the one thing that I can always say that God has never not made me happy? I now I'm not saying that he hasn't sent the gospel and it ain't stepped on my toes, but in the end, it's still, it's joyous because, you know, he loved me so much that he's willing to correct me. You know, I'm thankful that we got a God like that. You know, again, if you got the pot of oil, you got everything, but I hope this was a blessing to you. Love all y'all and, you know, I hope you have a good rest of your afternoon.